club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Art club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Some of the time we might do drawing and painting But most of the time we will do painting and drawing Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art club! Hello guys and welcome back to another art club I hope you enjoyed the last episode. I had loads and loads of great pictures sent in to me, loads of dadmers, I'll put them all up here actually. Uh, loads of dadmers, loads of fish, a lot of people had to go at the bouncing bum animation too. We've got a great show lined up for you today. One thing I'd quickly like to mention, a lot of your mums and dads have been saying, Olaf, how can we give you some kind of payment in exchange for all of these wonderful art clubs you've been making? Well, guess what? You don't have to. Just keep watching, keep sharing, and that's payment enough, but, if you would like to give Olaf that thing called money, then I've set up a thing called coffee and you can basically buy me a coffee and go to a link which will be around, probably in the description, I might work out how to make a button, I don't know, but go to it and you can buy me a coffee. And I've had quite a few people buy me a coffee actually, and I tell you what, I've not spent it all on coffee. I've actually spent some of it on this fabulous green screen I've got here, you see this? And basically what this means is, I can use this and I can do all sorts of special effects. Isn't that good? So basically, if more of you buy me a coffee, then I can keep doing more amazing stuff like that. Anyway, back onto the show. Today we've got lined up a great show for you. We're gonna be drawing an ice cream. Uh, it's gonna be a special ice cream. Obviously, I wouldn't do a normal one, would I? Uh, we're going to be learning about an artist that you might not have heard of, but she is a really great artist. I love her. We are also going to be doing a little bit of a kind of an exercise about texture and there's also going to be a monster in a cave drawing. It's going to be fun, there's going to be some jokes, and I 100% guarantee, because I had quite a few complaints about it last time, there will not be any fishes in this show. Last week we had the Dadma, we had the fish drawings, we had Jean-Michel Basquiat, and he had quite a few fish in some of his work. It was quite a fish-heavy episode, and I guarantee, 100% promise, there will be no fish in this episode. Right, before we get on with it, I just wanna say a few quick things. Please click subscribe if you haven't. Please also share Art Club with all of your mates. And if you're a teacher, please set it as the art homework for your kids. Uh, also, if you're a parent or a teacher, share it with other parents and teachers. Click subscribe, click like. I don't know why you have to, but apparently that is the YouTube law. If I'm on YouTube, I have to tell everyone to click like. Uh, I think that's about it. Let's get on with it. Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art Club! Right, it's time for our two-part drawing bit, and as the name suggests, it's a drawing that is done in two parts. We're going to do the first part now, and we'll do the second part at the end of the show. Basically, it means that you have to keep watching the whole thing, unless you're one of those clever kids who skips the middle bit and goes straight to the end. But don't do that. Watch the whole thing. Don't. It's all good stuff, honestly. Right, what you need is a sheet of paper and then something to draw with. Uh, I've got my two fancy brush pens here, I'll use those. And what we're going to be drawing is an ice cream, but it's not just any old ice cream. I obviously wouldn't do that, would I? This is going to be an ice cream with a laser eye. So it's like a laser ice cream, a laser eye ice cream, a laser ice cream. So we're going to start with the laser ice cream and it's going to be shooting a laser out of its eye. And then in the second half, of the drawing, it's going to be destroying a food that you dislike. Because basically, we all like ice cream, don't we? That's, that's like the rule. If you don't like ice cream, if it's not your favorite food, it's definitely in your top five. And if you don't like ice cream, then are you really a human being? You're probably like an alien uh, from outer space who's pretending to be a human or something. But we all like ice cream. Right, so we're gonna start with the ice cream on this side, and we're gonna start with the kind of the top of the ice cream. I always think that the top of the ice cream uh, could also look a bit like the poop emoji. Actually, do you remember last week I showed you that animation of the year 2020 turning into a poop? I think I should probably show you that again, shouldn't I? Yep, still relevant. Right, let's get on with it. We're gonna start with our ice cream over here. Let me dust off my bit of paper. So we'll start around about here and we'll do a lump kind of there and then another lump. And then we do like a little whippy bit on top that kind of comes up to a point 
and then back around and then back around down here and then it curves back down here now before I join this up I'm going to do the laser eye because you need to do a laser beam that comes over here so it's going to start around here and we'll do a line Ooh, try and keep your line as straight as you can and about there and then another line that kind of just follows that line but perhaps just gets a little bit wider towards this end and then we'll draw the laser eye here so it's like a little curve and then we'll draw a circle around that and then we'll draw another circle around that and we'll do the colouring in this middle bit will be red and this outer bit will be like a silver robotic eye now what we can do is join up the ice cream ends there and there and we can do the other eye the other eye is a normal eye he's only got one laser eye and then we'll draw his mouth which goes behind the laser beam and we'll do it curved like so and i'll probably do a line of teeth at the top here Maybe even a little thin line of teeth underneath. That rhymes. And I'll do some lines through his teeth. Again, like I say, if I'm going too fast for you, you can always pause this, do a bit of drawing and catch up and unpause it. There we go. Uh, oh, because he's like an angry laser eyed ice cream, I'll give him a, an eyebrow that is going down. Now, the next thing we're going to do is the cone, and the top of the cone almost looks like the collar of a jumper or something. It kind of goes around like that. And then the actual cone itself is a cone shape, funnily enough. It's rounded at the bottom here, and then it goes all the way back up again a big V shape. Now I want his legs to just be quite small. I want him to be a bit top heavy. So I'll do a line there, a line there, and a little foot there, and a little foot there. And I'm going to do his two hands kind of clenched. And I'll probably do those first and then do the arms connecting. So I'll draw a thumb like that and then I'll go one, two, three lumps and then one, two, three lumps and then just a little line going there, not joining all the way and then I'll do exactly the same on this side. I'll draw a thumb, try and keep it sort of the same size as that there and then I'll go one, two, three, one, two, three and then just extend that line a little bit, but not quite so it's touching. There are the two clenched fists, and then I'll draw the arms. Like so. And then do the other bit like this. And now we're gonna do the cone texture. Now the cone texture, actually we're gonna be doing a bit about the textures next, so this is quite interesting. The cones have got like a, almost like a diamond shape. So we draw diagonal lines going around, sort of curved diagonal lines like this going this way and then all the way down so it almost looks like it stripes and then we're going to do that going the other way but we're not going to cross over we're going to go in between you, you'll see what I mean so instead of doing a line that goes all the way along there we'll go and stop before we get to the line so it's almost like a dotted line going this way and we'll do it again. So it's dotted lines instead of solid lines. And that will give us that kind of waffly cone texture. And when we colour it in, we can make that even more like a waffly texture. There you go, that looks pretty good. So that is the laser ice cream. And in the next part, we are gonna draw the food that the laser ice cream is destroying. And it's gonna be the food that you hate the most. So think 
of the food that you hate the most, and then we'll draw that here in the last part of the show. What did the buffalo say to his child when he left for school? Bye, son! <laughs> and that joke has come from Rufus, age eight. What we're going to do now is a quick drawing exercise based on texture. Now, hopefully you will find this really useful when you're doing your drawings. In the past, we've done stuff about shading and hatching and light and 3D objects and that kind of stuff. Well, this is all about texture and texture is, well, I'm pretty sure you know what texture is. It's the way that stuff feels or in art, it's the way that stuff looks like it might feel. So for example, if you've got something that's rough like a rock, you do some lines on it that make it look like it might be rough. Anyway, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Actually, a rock is quite a good place to start. So let me draw a kind of a jaggedy line that looks like it might be a rock. And it's already looking quite jaggedy and rock-like. If you wanted to make it even more rocky, then just add some lines that kind of look a bit like this. Some little jaggedy lines. So it's almost a bit like hatching. You can see that if you add a few more of those, Let's add a bit more in the foreground and your rock starts to look more like rock just from, just from a few simple texture lines there you go so they're kind of jaggedy lines and that has instantly made this Kind of rocky bit look even more rocky now it doesn't just have to be rocks you could oh i know a good one one that i use quite a bit you just quickly draw looks quite familiar doesn't he but his beard and his moustache they don't look quite as hairy as they should and that again is where you need to add some texture and again it's just a simple act of putting in some lines that follow the shape of the beard. So they go with the curve of the beard down that side, and then they go with the curve of the beard down this side. And we're not drawing every single individual hair, we're just doing a few lines that give the impression that what we have got here is a hairy face. And we've definitely got a hairy face. So we'll carry on doing a few of those. And once we get to the moustache, Here. Try and make them quite thin. I've made a few thicker ones there. It doesn't really matter. And then once we get to the moustache, we follow the line of the moustache and perhaps make them a bit thinner. There we go. And that looks a hundred times better. I'll tell you what, I'll put in a cap. So there's the bridge of my cap. And another good texture that I use quite a lot is wood. So if I draw a plank of wood on my head, so that's the edge of the plank of wood. Now for a wood texture, you have the grain and the grain is kind of almost a straight line, but you can make it kind of a little bit wiggly. And this is really useful if you're drawing trees, if you're drawing old treasure chests, anything basically that's made of wood, ships, pirate ships, boats. And what you do, you do thinner lines that run along the length of the, and they can kind of break up and they can wiggle a bit like this. And you just follow that with another one. You do one underneath. And they can be broken lines, they can be solid lines. instantly makes it look like wood. Put a few little dots on the end of the plank where it's been cut in half and you might even get to fit a thin line down that edge there and it instantly looks like wood. Uh, what else could we do? Oh sand! Sand is easy it's just dots like this. So if I do a line behind my head there just dots and then occasionally you might want to add some kind of little bigger bits, little pebbles of sand. It's just dots. Let's do a couple more. Uh, brick. 
brick is a really good one. So brick texture, you use some horizontal lines. So let's do, say for example, three horizontal lines and then you do a line that comes down like this. And then rather than doing the next line straight underneath it, you move along a bit and then do the line. And then when you do a line underneath that, you go back to where the original one was. And if you do one above this, so you make a pattern that looks like that. Now, if you've got a big wall, you don't have to do the whole wall in brick because that could take quite a while. You can just do little patches like that. And let's do another patch, exactly the same. So we'll do just two lines this time. A line there, a line there, a line there. And then if I do another bit over here, I'll go back to doing three lines. I can do a little line on top. So we do a line there, miss out a bit. We go to this one, we do a line. We do a line there, we miss out one, and we go there. Do one there. And it looks like the entire background behind me is now brick, even though I've just done three little splodges. Quite a nice tip. Uh, what else? Let's do, this one's a good one. It's an orange, and oranges, you know, they've got dimpled skin. And to show that they've got dimpled skin, we'll just do little dots, exactly the same as the sand, except because it's on a round sphere, we'll just do it down one side, like this, and it instantly makes our round object look more like an orange. And if we put in the little bit at the top there, there you go, it's an orange. So hopefully, that will have taught you a little bit about textures. Why not try making a weird picture of your own, a bit like that, with lots of different textures? Which mythical character makes smoothies? Medusa. And that joke has come from Polly, age 10. It's time for our one minute artist and this week it's an artist that you might not have heard of before but she's a really great painter and her name is Alma Thomas. One minute artist Alma Thomas. Alma Thomas was born in 1891 in Columbus, Georgia in the United States. When she was a teenager, her family moved to Washington DC for education opportunities. She got a degree in fine art and for 35 years she was a high school art teacher. After she retired from teaching, in 1960, she focused more on her art. Her paintings are mostly abstract explorations of colour. She incorporated intense colour palettes and experimented with unusual viewpoints, including close-up representations of flowers and trees as seen from space. A lot of her paintings are made from small blocks of colour, almost like a mosaic or a jigsaw puzzle. This painting by Alma Thomas is based on Henri Matisse's famous paper cutout picture called The Snail. She once said, light reveals to us the spirit and living soul of the world through colour. Alma Thomas was the first African-American female artist to have her work displayed in the White House. This picture called Resurrection was unveiled by Michelle Obama in 2015. And that was Alma Thomas in a minute. There you go, that was interesting wasn't it? And also a little bit... <laughs> Educational, sorry. Now, I really like Alma Thomas. I especially like her because she used to be an art teacher and art teachers are brilliant. Big shout out to any art teachers out there. Hello, you're great, keep up the good work. Now, we're gonna be doing an Alma Thomas painting. Uh, her paintings were quite abstract, but a lot of them were kind of based on real things. And they reminded me actually of some fun sort of drawings I used to do when I was a kid, some little kind of, uh, almost like puzzles. So for example, I would draw something and I would show it to my friends and I would say, do you know what this is? And it would always be something that isn't what you think it is, or it would be something weird. Or I'll, I'll show you what I mean. For example, what is this? It's a koala bear climbing a tree, obviously. Should we do another one? Here you go, what's this? Looks similar. That's a giraffe going past your window. Do you wanna see some more? Okay, let's do another one. Okay, what's this? That is a garden gnome reading a newspaper. Oh, let's do a couple more, let's do a couple more. Here you go, what's this? It's a pig coming through the fog. See his little snout there and his mouth, yeah. No? Okay, one last one, I promise. Last one. What is this? I mean, this one's obvious. If you don't get this one, then you're stupid. What's this? 
That's right, it's a family of five stood next to a swimming pool viewed from above. Can you see it? There you go. So anyway, I thought we could do one of those fun little kind of puzzle drawings, but in the style of Alma Thomas. Now, I'm going to do a bit of painting because in the title of Art Club it says there's going to be some painting and drawing and you'd be upset if there wasn't any painting and it was just all drawing. So I'm going to be doing some painting and I'm actually going to be using this canvas here and my fancy paints. But you can use whatever you like. You can use paints, you can use felt tips, you can use pencils. All we're going to do is the same kind of mosaic-y brush strokes or drawing that Alma Thomas did. Now this will take quite a while, so I will be putting a lot of this in fast forward. So if you do want to do yours, you're probably better off just watching me do mine and then doing yours afterwards. So if you want, just watch mine and then do one after, obviously. Anyway, let's stop talking, let's get on with it. So I'm gonna get my pencil here because Alma Thomas, she would sketch out what she was doing on her canvas using a pencil. So. I'm going to do a giraffe going past a window and the giraffe's neck is going to come sort of down here. So I'll just draw a line just so I know where the giraffe's neck is going to go. It doesn't have to be ultra neat. And then I'm going to draw those kind of patches on the giraffe's neck. So one there. On there. So that is my basic sketch, really simple. Yours can be really simple and you can do whatever you want. It doesn't have to be a giraffe. It could be any kind of landscape, uh, mountains, suns, flowers. Have a look at some of Alma Thomas's work actually and see what you like. And I've got my fancy paint and I've got my water here and I've got a couple of brushes. I think I'm ready to go. Now I'm gonna start by doing these patches, I think. Actually, no, let's start with doing the lightest color, which is going to be the kind of the giraffe's neck. And I'll probably use some yellows and browns and oranges and pinks. You don't have to use the colors that the thing actually is if you don't want to. It can be a bit more abstract if you like. But we will certainly, oh, I've not opened that one. Which, which yellow have I opened? get a bit of yellow out and I'm going to start doing the neck here. So just do a little tile and then follow it up with another tile. It's almost like a jigsaw puzzle and they don't have to be kind of rectangular shapes. They can be all sorts of shapes and it doesn't matter if your shapes touch. It doesn't have to be like a clear gap between. And just carry this. I'm gonna do a line of two all the way down there and then a line of two all the way up. I'll put that in fast forward. the yellow done, I'm going to clean off my brush and then do another colour. And again, I finish with that colour, so I'll clean off my brush and I'll do another. There you go. Hopefully you'll start to see your picture taking shape. Now this does take quite a while and it does need a bit of patience, but it is quite relaxing. It's almost like doing a jigsaw puzzle. I'm gonna do these patches now on the giraffe's neck and I'll probably use some blues and some reds, might even use some greens. I'll use lots of different colors and then we'll move on to the sky in the background.
Right, now I'm gonna crack on with the sky. Hopefully you're all still watching me. Here we go. And there you go, my finished Alma Thomas style giraffe going past a window painting. I hope you give it a go and try one of your own. Share them with me using the hashtag OlafArt. without any legs. And oh, and that joke has come from Tom, age 11. Well, that was quite funny, wasn't it? What we're gonna do now is a cave drawing. And I don't mean the cave drawings that cavemen from olden times would have made. I mean a kind of a painting. It's actually not a drawing, is it? It's like, more like a collage with a bit of painting. And it's gonna be a cave and inside the cave will be whatever you want. I'm gonna put a monster in mine. Now what you'll need is a sheet of white paper and some sheets of colored paper if possible. You can paint your own paper, leave it to dry and then use that. And I'm gonna use a blue, which is gonna be my kind of sky background color. And this pink is gonna be for my cave. So what I'm gonna do is take my sheet of pink paper and I'm gonna make a kind of tear sort of two thirds up that's gonna go round. And you don't have to be nice and neat for this because it's a, a cave. There you go. That is gonna be the shape of the cave. And I'm gonna tear out the entrance to my cave next. I'll do that here. There we go. And inside this cave is where I'm gonna put my monster. But before I do that, I'm gonna use these bits that I've cut out and I'm gonna use those to fill in the rest of my cave. And I'm gonna stick them down and hopefully it will give my cave a bit of a layered look, like it could almost go on forever. And using my glue stick, I'll stick this one down first. And what we're going for here is a nice, layered effect. So stick this one down first. Yeah, that works. And then I'm gonna put this one sort of there. So if I kind of mark out, I need to go there. Bit fiddly this, because you kind of want it to stick down and you don't want to move it. So you can kind of glue it in place almost. I and mean, the bit on top hopefully will pin it down. There we go. And then we take our last bit, and that hopefully, yeah, there we go, fits nice and snug over the top. So just get some glue on that. If you like, is use the remaining bit, perhaps to add a bit of foreground rock. I might just rip that in half, and then a bit of that there. Good. If you want a nice sharp edge where it goes off the page, you can just use your scissors. And I might have this bit coming up here.
now all I need to do is take my sheet of white paper and a pen and we draw a little monster that we can cut out and stick inside our cave. And this is where you can just be as creative as you like, really. I'm going to do a monster with one, two, three eyes. Some horns. Oh, give him some hands as well. And then being extra careful, cut out your monster using your scissors. Now, if your monster's got lots of fiddly bits like mine, you can just cut around him quite roughly. And if it is too tricky to cut around the monster's arms and legs, you can just leave a little shape like that around him. Make sure that the bottom is nice and flat. And you can turn that into perhaps a rock that he is sitting on. I'm going to glue that down now. Now all we need to do is add some shading, add some texture. Do you remember when we did rock texture from earlier on? Add some rock texture, we can add some plants. Uh, decorate it as much or as little as you like and I think that these make really good pictures to put on the front of your bedroom door uh, to keep people out. It's almost like your bedroom is guarded by a monster. I might put my name at the top of mine at the end. And there you go, a wonderful bit of cave art using ripped up paper and also that texture advice that I gave you earlier on in the show. Keep out Olaf's cave. I think I'll stick this on the door of my studio so I don't get disturbed whilst I'm making art. Please share yours with me using the hashtag OlafArt. Grab a brush, we're about to do Art Club! Right, you may remember, right at the beginning of the show, we drew a laser ice cream, and there was a laser shooting out of his eye, and it was going to be destroying the food that you hate the most. So now I want you to think of the food that you hate the most, and then we're going to draw that here, and we're going to put a little face on it, and it's going to be getting shot by the laser eye and it's gonna be exploding and it's gonna be saying, oh no, uh, my food. I actually quite like lots and lots and lots of food. Um, if I had to say a food that I'm not particularly keen on, it would be tinned tuna, so like tuna in a can. Uh, so I'm gonna draw a can of tuna with a little face on it going, ah, and the laser eye is gonna be shooting it. Now, to draw a can of tuna, you can do whatever you like. You can do Brussels sprouts, uh, I love Brussels sprouts, but I know some kids hate them. Whatever food you dislike the most. Uh, so I'm going to draw a can of tuna. <laughs> Again, only copy this if you also hate cans of tuna. So it's kind of like a semicircle, but you'll notice that I've left a gap here and a gap there because that is where some of the chunks of tuna are going to be coming out. So we'll just draw some like odd chunk shapes. 
hear kind of like tuna coming out and then a few more bits there. And then we can draw a, another circle around, which is going to be the edge of the can. And then I'm going to draw a diagonal line here and a diagonal line there. And the tuna cans, they're, they're not like massive, like baked bean cans. They're quite short and kind of shallow. So we'll draw that edge there. And I'll draw the lid of the can kind of bent over like this and then curved and then bent over. And then on the inside of the can, I'll draw like a shape like that. And I'll draw the ring pull of the can like that. And I'll draw a face on it going, no. Actually, I think I'll have it saying no. No. And then draw a little speech bubble around it. Draw your words first and then draw your speech bubble. Top art club tip. Now we're gonna draw the explosion going around. And that is basically just a set of curves that come to a point like this and just carry it all the way around whatever food you've drawn. And do let me know what foods you've drawn. And do get your mums and dads to share them with me. I have that explosion coming back around here. Back around here. And then you can also draw some kind of more bits of your food as though it is kind of exploding. If you want to make it more of an explosion. And then I think what we'll do now is get our laser ice cream to say something. So mine's gonna be saying, tuna can, tuna can't more like. Now what you need to do is color it in and sign your name. I'm gonna do that now and put it in fast forward. I'll see you after. And there you have it, my laser-eyed ice cream, my laser ice cream, destroying a can of tuna. Now, I've just had word from my lawyers that I shouldn't be uh, encouraging children to not eat tuna because it's apparently very good for you and it's high in lots of omega oils and vitamins and stuff. So keep eating tuna, kids. Don't destroy it with laser eyes. But I really enjoyed this and it's lots of fun. If you've done your own, please do share them with me using the hashtag OlafArt and you'll be able to win this one. You'll be able to win my one. All you need to do is go to the comments of this video and type in there your favorite flavor of ice cream and your worst ever food. And the winner of last week's drawing, which if you remember, looked like this, will be coming up underneath now. Congratulations if that was you and everyone else, enjoy drawing your laser ice cream. I think that is it for another art club. Aww. Yeah, I know. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't enjoyed it, then don't watch anymore. If you have enjoyed it, there are a few things that I would like you to do. I would like you to click subscribe if you haven't, click like if you haven't, comment below with your favorite ice cream and your worst food if you want to win my drawing from today. Uh, also, comment with your favorite jokes. Share Art Club, that's a really important one. Share Art Club, because I'd like to spread the word. Uh, I'm running out of fingers now, but if you are a teacher, set Art Club as your homework. Share your children's drawings with me using the hashtag 
Olaf art. I nearly forgot it then. How can I forget that? Uh, what else is that about it? Oh, I've not shown you the bouncing bum animation today, so uh, we'll, we'll put that now. And I think that is it. So it's time to say bye, and we've done it. We've made it through a whole episode of Art Club without having any what the fish. Oh, bye. <laughs>